Great. Okay. So today we'll be talking about um, themes in ggplot or the ggplot theme command. And this is kind of a trickier stock ggplot, I think, um, but it's also something that allows you to really fine tune how your ggplot or how your plot will end up looking. So it can really take your plot from looking like something that you can easily um, identify as coming from, sorry, easily identify as a ggplot and, and can turn it into something that's a little bit more fancy. So as the documentation says, it controls all of the non-data components of plots. So for example, the titles, like the color and size of the title, you'll see a lot about that and the other labels. So lots of different text elements you can change and fonts. We'll touch a little bit on fonts today, but we're going to have a whole meetup on fonts um, next next month. You can also change backgrounds and grid lines, change around the legends and so on. So in order to like play with this today, we're mostly going to look at the same graph just to have a baseline graph that we can work with. And it's going to be from this um, Tidy Tuesday data that's about penguins that I, I think we kind of used several times by now. Um, so here, this is what we'll be working with. Should be able to read it in. Yeah, so we have um, the build depth of a, like penguins bill on, on its face, how long it is and how deep it is for three different species of penguin. I think we've looked at this data before. We've added some labels so that way we can really work with some of the text elements, but this is what we'll mostly be working with just as to have a baseline to show what we can do with theme. So if you're in a rush, the easy way to do themes in ggplot is just to use the built-in themes that are already done. Um, you're probably aware of these, but maybe you haven't tried them all out. So we put them here so we can take a look. So there's theme gray, I believe that's the default. That kind of, this is the classic ggplot <laughs> gray background. And then there's a bunch of other options like theme bw is a black and white well, not in terms of color, but the kind of background in the plot is black and white with this clear black border around the outside. Um, there's theme classic. This one has like no grid lines, but just has your X and Y axis highlighted. So I'll go through these pretty quickly, but I think you get the idea. So you always can just add this command to the end of your ggplot to get this look without having to tweak anything or change anything. So there's the Theme dark is this one with um, kind of a dark background, this darker gray background. Theme light. This one to me looks a little bit like theme black and white, but maybe the outline here is a little bit different. So there's quite a lot. There's also line draw, another similar one. Minimal is the one I use the most, especially for, um, yeah, <laughs> quick and easy adding things to publication that I don't really feel like messing around with. And you can use the minimal. You can see it still has the grid lines. I find that helps orient your eye a little bit to where things are, but it doesn't have anything extra and it doesn't have that gray background. Um, theme test, this one says like a box and theme void will have like nothing. It's just the void, but that can look cool if you're doing, well, that can be necessary if you're doing something like a map where you really don't want any access labels or anything. That's a quick way to like get rid of all of that. Okay, so you can, yeah, like you can see that how it changes the background. And this is a really easy way to change the look of your plot because all you have to do is add one line, which is plus and theme void. And just in case it's, a, uh, it's not something you've seen before, we've saved the plot here as P1 um, in the first block. So whenever we call P1, it already has the, it's the same as if we had rewritten that code for that plot again. It's kind of a shorthand because we saved it as P1. Yeah, so there's also a few more we want to show you which are not built into R, which might be a little bit more interesting without having you have to specify everything yourself. <laughs> and that would be um, from the GG themes package. If you don't have this package already, you'll have to install it. So you can um, uncomment this line if you want to do that. And we've called it here with the package name and two dots, so two colons in front of it. That's because we didn't exactly load in the package. We can just call these couple of functions from the package. So like you see, we have the plot, our whole code for our plot, and then we just add ggthemes 
And there's a couple here that match like certain styles of publications or online publications like The Economist, 538. Um, so this is apparently how they look. <laughs> the Economist looks a little bit funny with these colors, but you get the idea that it's like this light blue and these white lines. And there's a bunch on here, so you can look at the package and see if there's any that you like. Um, but there's also this one, this is from 538, which I think is an online publication. And there's even one that makes it look like you made it with Google Docs, which I mean, maybe it's helpful if you're actually doing something on Google Docs and you want to quickly add in something from um, a ggplot, but that's how it, apparently it looks on Google Docs. Yeah, so for the GG themes package, you just install the package and then you can call these different custom themes. So that's basically uh, all, that's basically was kind of a quick overview of how you can use theme in a way that doesn't require you to really specify a lot of the theme options, but just lets you pick uh, to go with like a sensible default that will already kind of upgrade your, <laughs> your plot a little bit. Um, is there any questions on that before I go on to the custom themes? I'll try to go a little slower in this part. That part I was just showing the, um, the pre-built ones. Is there any questions? Okay, so now comes like a little bit trickier part is what if you don't want to use these pre-made themes and you want to actually specify things on your own, like actually customize the theme elements. And um, so with theme, you can change things like the title and the subtitle, the axes label and the axes and grid lines and the background. And how this is done is um, they're divided into different elements. So when you change the title, you have to set it to a text element, same as if you set a subtitle or a label, anything that's text. If you set, if you're changing something that is a line element, you have to use, um, you have to specify that it's element line. So that would be something like axes or grid lines. And then there's also rectangular boxes, which get um, element rect for rectangle. And you'll see these, we're gonna go through them one, one at a time. So first I'm gonna start with all of the text elements and how you change them with element text. And then I'll talk about lines and we'll be able to talk about rectangles. And there's also one called element blank, which you'll see towards the end too, which basically just removes something from the plot. So let's start with text. Um, this little graph, sorry, it's a little bit small on my screen, but you can also look at it on your, on your own screen. It just shows you all the different places where we have text on a, on a ggplot and what they're called within the theme command. Kind of, a, it also serves as a reminder, or it might be helpful to save this image and come back to it. But you can see the basic idea. So um, when we're working with theme, a lot of the time we get these names that are separated by dots. So often two words are separated, yeah, just like by a little dot. But otherwise the, the names would be something you would kind of expect. So there's the plot title and the plot subtitle. There's a legend title and the legend text. We'll get into that more when we talk about legends a little bit later. There's also the axis title and the axis text. So that's considered text, even if it's a number, you know, whatever the labels are on those markers are considered the text. And you have like axis title Y and axis title X. So you have both of them in both Y and X form. You also have this little tag, which is up here in the top left and the caption, which is on the bottom right. Okay, so when you're wanting to change any one of these text elements, you are specifying what you want to be there within um, this element text, an element text call. And when you're, whenever you're changing something that's text with an element text call, you can make a couple of different decisions. Um, so one of them, and you don't need all of these, these are just all the options. So you can, you don't have to specify all of them all the time. You only have to specify the ones that you wanna change. But there's family, that's basically what we would call the font. So, and R doesn't have a ton of options built in for this. And like I said, we'll get to that more next month, but for the options that they do have, you can change here. So you can, for example, change it to Times New Roman. Um, face would be something like bold or italic. You have color and you can spell it the British way or the um, sort of US way or either, either variant. The text size, 
I think that's pretty similar to what the sizes that you'd see like in Microsoft Word. Then you can change a little bit about the position. So you can like adjust it horizontally. You can move it up or down a little bit horizontally. Um, yeah, horizontal, no, <laughs> left or right a little bit horizontally or up and down vertically. You can change the angle. So you can actually make things kind of tilted along the axes, uh, line height. You can add a margin around it. Yeah, these are more nitpicky ones that you probably don't need, but the main ones being like how to change the the um, the font and all of that, all of those elements. Okay, so let's say we want to um, change all of the text in a plot. Now, like I said, um, the P one is all of the all of the normal code you would write to make your plot, and then you add plus theme. And within the theme call, that's where you can start specifying the locations, which would be kind of what you see on this on this um, graph, so these little red labels. And you always set it equal to element text, and then you can change the arguments within the element text. It took, I think it takes a while to see this as intuitive, like it's a little bit <laughs> tricky, but I think you'll see it over and over again and, and it'll start to make sense, I think. So first of all, you open the theme call, then I'm using text because it will change all text, setting it equal to element text, where the only thing I'm changing is that the color is red. So you can see now that all of the text is red. Um, yeah, apparently the text call doesn't actually change the labels on the axes, but all the other text is red. But nothing else has changed, so I haven't changed like the size. All that has is kind of still at its default state. So I've just made all the text red. So you could do the same thing, for example, if you wanted to set it all bold, you could do your plot plus theme, all text equals element text where the face is bold. And that would just bold all of the text in your plot. Okay, but you can also modify specific text fields to really kind of tweak how they look. Um, is there any questions I should answer first? Okay. So you can modify specific text fields. And so th these you also saw in the image up there. So there's, for example, the plot title and the plot subtitle. So we'll set the plot title equal to a text element where the color is yellow, the size is 22, and the face is bold. And then you can see this is kind of one little unit. And then we have a comma. We can change something else within the theme in the same call. So we can also change the subtitle. And the subtitle we're going to set equal to a text element where the color is orange and the face is italic and the size 18. So you can imagine how this looks. It's not going to be super beautiful because it's yellow and orange and bold and italics. But I think you get the idea that now we have a very large, bold, and very yellow title and then um, this kind of orange italics underneath. And you can change this to any sort of the colors that are available on um, on ours like defaults. I think you can also use hex codes if you want. Oops. So you can, yeah, change those around in any way. And I believe like 22 that I think that vaguely corresponds or it should correspond to like what you would get with text size 22 on Microsoft Word, for example. Okay, so there we changed plot title and plot subtitle and these are both element text. Now, just to show you about this um, B just and H just. So H just, because it's horizontal, it's it corresponds to whether you want the text to be like left aligned with within whatever space it's in or right aligned or center aligned. So just to, just to demonstrate, say we right align the title and we left align the subtitle. And here we're not changing the font size or the color. We're just leaving it as it is. And the only thing we want to change is like this H just argument. So we have, now we have like a right aligned title. So it starts right here on the right hand side of the space that it's in, which is kind of like the space above the box, um, the plot. And the subtitle stays left aligned. So I guess it makes a little bit of sense then if one is right aligned and zero is left aligned, that one half, so 0 0.5 is centered. So your code. If you set the title to a text element with a horizontal justification of 0.5 and the subtitle to 
to the horizontal justification of 0.5, then they both become centered over the top of the plot. Right, so that's what H just does. It basically lets you pick between left aligned, um, center aligned, and right aligned. Okay. Then um, V just is the vertical alignment. And this can just move things up and down a little bit. So maybe the best way to explain it is just to show it. <laughs> so you can see here that we've um, put the title vert vertically justified plus five. That moves it up up here. And we've moved the subtitle down five. That moves it down here. So if you move, if you do this like a little bit less drastically, you'd get like a little bit less offset. But basically, you can um, adjust where these are positioned. Okay, and um, maybe this doesn't seem <laughs> useful, but I think this is actually a little bit of a debate about where should the subtitle and title go over the top of, um, of a plot. So you can see in our in this version, or maybe it's easier to see in kind of the plain version, that the text starts right here. So it's not actually like aligned with the with the edge of the the plot or the space of the plot but it's aligned with the start of kind of like the background and the Y axis label. Um, and some, um, I think, it, yeah, this became a thing because some people would like to have the text that it aligns at the side of the of the image. So they, they added this little trick to this, which is that you can um, set plot dot title position. So this is a bit of a different name as when you're setting it up here with plot dot title, but you can do plot dot title dot position equals plot. And you can do the same thing with the caption. So plot.caption position equals plot. And now you can see that like the text starts here on this right lined up with kind of where the edge of this um, image would be or lined up with the text of the Y axis. And same with this caption got moved over a little bit more to the side. So here it's also lined up with the edge of this gray space. So that was a recent addition just to be able to um, I believe that the idea is that this is actually better design, <laughs> better design than having it lined up with the gray box. Okay. Um, yeah, so then what you can also change is the margins, which will just add some white space around the text. So here, say we're going to take again plot.title and we're going to set it equal to a text element. We can set the individual margins how much space they should have. And so when you set um, the margin within the element text call, so this part here, you have to set four numbers, <laughs> how much margin you want at the top, how much you want at the right, how much you want at the bottom, and how much you want at the left. Um, I feel like maybe it's pixels, but I'm not sure. And so there's a little, yeah, way to remember this is the word trouble because T-R-B-L, trouble, um, top, right, bottom, left. So you can't leave one of these out. You have to, if you don't want, like for this, we, I'm gonna try and add like a puffer to the top and the bottom, but I don't want any changes to the right and the left, but I still have to specify that the right and the left should stay zero. And that will give me this like puff, like this little buffer around um, the text. This looks kind of similar to the verti vertical justification, but it's different because we've actually like added space here. We haven't just moved up the text within the existing space, but now we have more total space above the above the graph. So that's how, yeah. So again, that was text element where we set the margin. The margin is equal to, and then we have to say margin again, margin, and then we can give the top, right, bottom, and left values. Are there any questions so far? Uh, yeah, there's a question. Um, does plot title position also work if there's no legend? Yeah, that would also work. Um, that would also, I think then like the total space to the right would be a little bit smaller, but I can show you. So say we yeah, 
if we take off the legend there and then we add this theme You can see it's still aligned to the side, but I guess now there's actually no space there because there is no legend holding that space. But in theory, also, no matter what you had there, like say you had a little bit, you had added a little bit of a margin here or a buffer, it would always go to the side um, of the image. But as you can kind of tell here, there is nothing else there. So I think maybe that doesn't really look that different, but it's um, it's a different, com it's still doing something different. It's just having like a similar optic effect. <laughs> yeah, but it does, the presence of the legend is not, is not necessary. Yeah, anything else? Um, yes, one more. Um, so is there any um, justified alignment? So not left align, right align, but completely justified. And I'm not sure if I've seen that, have you? Justified. Does that like mean like justifying stretch? the text? Yeah, if you have several lines. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I also I'm also not sure. I think this would only make sense if you have quite a long title or quite a long mm -hmm. subtitle. Yeah, I, I, yeah. True. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one more thing about the title and the title, and then I'll show you some of the same stuff again with like the X, the axis label. You can change the line spacing using line height. Here we've added um, like a, a multi line title. So by doing this backspace N in your title label, you actually get, you can actually put a line break there. So for example, we're, here we're just changing the title to be bill length and depth on two, on two lines. And then you can change the line spacing, which is like the space between these two parts, these two lines of the title. So um, we have set plot.title, element text, line height to 0.7. And, or if we do it to 1.5, then you can see we'll get like a lot more space between the lines. And of course, these are kind of things where once you have this element text, you um, can change multiple things within the text, right? So you can also have face equals bold. I think we saw this once, but just to um, remind you that you can you can also have multiple things within the same element text. So the line height is only really relevant if you have more than one line on your title, which is kind of similar to the question about justification, but <laughs> not quite. Okay, so what about the X and Y axis labels? Um, for this, it's really the same idea. So here, if you set axis.title.x, then you can change the elements of the axis title the same way that we've just been playing around with the title and the subtitle. So you set it equal to an element text and you can change the font size, the color, if it's bold or italicized and the angle. I don't think we've seen angle so far. But here I set the angle to 45. Um, <laughs> obviously this plot is not exactly great when it has the label turned this way, but you can see how that affected um, the, the text there. So now it's a little bit bigger, it's green, it's italics, and it's at a 45 degree angle. So if you changed it, for example, to a 90 degree angle, it would be totally <laughs> vertical here. Um, yeah, so. You can change that. That becomes more useful when you're talking about like the axis label and the than the axis title, but it's still an option here. Then here we've also um, changed the vertical justification again. So just like with uh, the titles, if you set the vertical justification to negative two, and we left the other things the same, then it pushes it down a little bit. So it's still green, it's still italics, it's still size 16, and now it's just like pushed down a little bit. Um, and you can also do a lot of the same stuff with the Y axis label. So I think you can probably imagine how you do that. Um, if this is axis.title.x, then you can probably imagine how you do that with the Y axis. But maybe more commonly, you wanna change both of the axes to look the same. And for that, you can just do axis.title. So you can see that like the dot x at the end um, 
is optional and you can also do axis.title and that will do both of the, the titles on both of the axes. So if we set axis.title to the same text element, so size 16, orange and bold, then they both become size 16, orange and bold. And that's kind of the general logic for some of these scheme commands that there are optional additions that you can add on, uh, but if you leave them off, then you'll get like both of the things that are subsumed under axis title. Sorry, it's quite, I think it's quite hard for me to fit the code and the image on the same um, screen. <laughs> And finally, let's see here, we can also do access title equals element blank. So anytime you set something equal to element blank, you really don't have to set any arguments for element blank. And what it's going to do is just kind of remove that, that item. So this would be a way to remove both of the axes label. Of course, if you don't, yeah. So this would also be useful because say you don't want to set new axis labels, but you also don't want your mess, messily formatted um, column names in there, you can set your axis title to element blank and it will just delete, won't show either of the, of the titles. Is there any questions on that? No? Okay, so then there's also um, more text on this graph and that would be the axis ticks. I sometimes get these confused because title and ticks sounds really similar and um, Perhaps even worse, it's not even called ticks, it's called text. So axis title, as you remember, is just um, the name of the axis, but the axis text is what's actually written on the tick marks. Okay, so let's see. Let's set this equal to a text element size eight, which is red and bold and a little bit tilted, so toward 45 degree angle. We've done this only on the X axis here. And you can see it's affected these numbers. Um, so this changing this angle, I mean, for these tiny numbers, maybe it doesn't make sense, but it can be really useful if you have a plot where the axis la la labels, no, yeah, labels are really long and, and when they print, they overlap each other. This happens quite a lot when you put things in to ggplot and on the default settings, it's like the text from the ticks will totally mix together. And if you set it at a 45 degree angle, then they'll become legible because um, they'll be spaced out a little bit. So that's a really useful trick that I think um, I use a lot is setting the axis text to again an element text and then changing the angle. You can of course also set this to like a 90 degree angle though 45 is usually easier to read. 90 usually makes you feel like you want to <laughs> tilt your head to the side um, but that's also an option. Yeah and here we show it again. So here we've changed the X axis to be 45 degree, like we have above, and we changed the Y axis to be 90 degree, which um, since it starts out kind of horizontally readable, it changes it here to being vertical. Or you could also do this on a 45 degree angle and they would kind of go out to the side. Generally speaking, these 45 degree changes are a little bit more readable than like a 90 degree change while still providing more space. Great, okay, so the final thing we'll do with element text is just the caption and the tag. So we've showed you above that the caption is like this part here that says data source and the tag, I believe is this graph one, let's see. So let's make this one, so let's make the caption purple, size 12, pushed a little bit up, just a tiny, a tiny nudge upwards, that's what this is doing, H just 0.5. Um, Oh no, sorry, H just 0.5 is actually centering it, <laughs> centering it. And then we're making it bold and italic with this keyword bold.italic. And then we'll change the text, uh, the tag to be pink <laughs> in size 14. So this was the tag, graph one, and now it's pink and it's size 14. And um, down here, now we have a centered, bold and italic and purple and large tag. <laughs> so that is taken care of here by this text. Okay, so I have the impression that felt probably like a lot of elements that are, are still pretty difficult to keep apart, but the only thing you have to really remember is what the options are. 
Um, and some of, a lot of these will only be necessary in the small handful of cases. And the ones that are really useful is like the family, the face, the color, the size. I think the angle is quite important too. Uh, and then the horizontal and vertical adjustment is just something to remember that exists if you get to the case that you want to nudge it. Um, and then also just to get used to the idea that you have the theme command, you set the location, and then you always have to set it equal to an element text if it's a text element. And you can use any or all of these options. Um, are there questions before I go on to the next type of thing we can change in theme? No? Great. Okay, so that was all of the things you can change with text. And now we'll go on to something different, which is all of the lines that you can change on your plot. Um, take a minute to take this in. These are all of the lines on a typical ggplot that can be changed with element line within the theme command. So let's see, the most common ones that you change are probably the panel grids. So there's major and minor grid lines. The major grid lines are at the axis ticks usually, so the bigger groupings. Sometimes they show up as like solid lines or more or darker lines. Whereas the minor grid lines are kind of fall in between of the ticks, it's a bit of a smaller division. So those are your panel grids. And if they are horizontal, so they're stacked up like bars like this, then it's always like panel grid x dot x. And if they're vertical, it's panel grid dot y. But you can also change both the vertical and the horizontal at the same time if you just don't specify whether you want the x or the y. Then you have the axes lines. That's um, all of these around the outside, this blue. And you have axes line y and axes line x. Then you'll have axes line y right across from the, the y axis. And then axis line x top, which is across from the, from the x axis. Um, finally, you have the ticks. So the ticks are the actual lines above the text. <laughs> so there's um, there's axis title, there's axis text, and there's axis ticks. And the ticks are the lines, and the other two are ticks. Okay, you don't have to memorize this right now, but um, just so that you have a reference. And this is really similar to how the text elements work. So you open the theme command, you specify the location, you say equals, and in this case, you have to set it equal to an element line. So you're no longer working with a text element, but with a line element. And there's a couple of similar things here. So you can set the color, for example. You can also set the size. And this works kind of how size works in ggplot in general, that like a bigger size will make the line a little bit thicker. Line type you may have also encountered in our ggplot. This is something like a dashed line or dotted line. Um, the line end, I'll show you an example that will show that. And the arrow, I'll also show you an example. OK, so let's start with our <laughs> trusted old plot here and add theme again. And let's change all of the axis lines. So axis line without specifying further what, what subsection. So this is the same, so location equals, here we have element line. And all I'm gonna do is set it blue and size three. And these sizes, this is also similar to how it usually works in ggplot. So um, changing between like two to three is, is actually a big difference, I'll show you. So here we have the, if we set axis dot line, we get these two main axis lines, axis, axis lines, <laughs> and we have them blue and size three. So for comparison, size two is a little bit, is considerably smaller and size four would be like huge. Um, yeah, so you can change those. And that's axis line. And so we can also change um, here. Now I've switched to just changing the x axis line by adding dot x. But I'm still going to make it blue and size three. And I want to make the line type equal to dashed. And this will make this dashed line. Maybe you can see better when it's a little bit smaller. So you can have dashed lines. You can also have, yeah, so when it's smaller, the lines get a little bit closer. And um, you can spell it out dashed or you can change the number. So each of the types has kind of like a number attached to it. 
the three is dotted, we have kind of written them out here. So there's like three um, dot dash, but maybe it's easier to remember the names or it is for me. So there's one for solid, that's the default, two for dashed, three for dotted, four for dot dash. So you can see here, it's like dot dash, dot dash. And there's also a long dash and a two dash. Basically, um, they look kind of similar. So that would be the long dash. Or this dash dash, like a short and a long. <laughs> yeah. So you can change that. You can also add arrows to the ends of your plots. Um, and you set that by, seems kind of like a strange piece of code, but it's just element line, the arrow is equal to an arrow. And in this one, you have kind of this opening close parentheses at the end, an arrow type object. So if we add this here, I've added to both axis lines, and you see that I get like an arrow head on the edge of my axis. Um, and finally, you can also change like line ends, which is essentially changing the shape of the line. So if we have line end equals round within our element line command, then you can see it kind of just puts this rounded end on there. Um, the default is called but, but then there's also square, which kind of just ducks it out a little bit further. So you can change how the ends of the lines look. So that was all the axes lines. Is there any questions that? No? Okay. Then there's also the axis ticks. Here, I'll set this to red and a little bit bigger. So axis.ticks, element line, is, it, is a line type element. And here, I've just made them like red and a little bit bigger. So you can see it just affects the actual, where the line would be jutting out. It doesn't affect the text. For the text, you have to do axis.text. The grid lines is something that's nice to be able to play around with if you want to actually take them away or change them a little bit. So again, you have the major and the minor grid, panel.grid major and panel.grid minor. They're both of type line, so element line. Um, and you can do the same things that like we've been doing to all the other element lines. So we can set the color, we can make it dashed or dotted, we can change how thick they are. And um, you can, yeah, so let's run this. So here you can see that now we have like the black major grid lines that are dashed and the minor grid lines being dark gray and dotted. And so usually you try to make the major grid lines be a little bit more visible than the minors. So that's why we've done it here like with black and dark gray. And you can also change it so that you're only looking at, or that you're only changing like here we can only change the, um, vertical ones, so the ones that start on the x-axis and go up, and we've left the y-axis ones the same, or you could do it also with the y-axis. But as with everything else in theme, if you don't specify the axis, the axis in particular, um, it will do both. You can also remove the line, the same as when we removed the um, labels on the axes by just setting it equal to element blank. So panel grid major, if we set that to element um, blank, then it will take away, oops, sorry, minor. So this took away the minor grid lines. Or we can take away the major grid lines or if we don't specify, then we take away both the grid lines. And just leave the background. You can also change the grid lines, like where they're located. This is a common thing that comes up, but you actually have to do this by changing, changing not within theme, so within the, within the plot itself. And for that, you use this command called scale continuous. Again, this is also dependent on the fact that the variables that we're looking at here are continuous. So we have um, like 40, 50, 60, they're numerical, they're not categories. And we can scale both the Y and the X axis on this continuous range. So we can set the breaks and the minor breaks. 
that was at the grid lines and the minor grid lines. Um, and here what we're doing is we're using the sequence command. So you can see this sequence, if you just run this part of the code, the sequence, you see it starts at 12, it goes to 22, and it's in steps of two. So that kind of does it automatically for, for you. You could have also, um, I think you can also do something like 12, 16, 20, you can give it manually. But if you do this sequence, then it kind of calculates it for you. So we're gonna have the major grid marks there. The minor grid marks we're doing from 12 to 22 in steps of 0.5. So you can see how that what that would look like. And on the x-axis, we're going from 35 to 60 in steps of five. So 35, 40, 45. And if you add this to your plot, then you can see like where these major breaks are. This is always in steps of two from 12 to 22. It doesn't show the beginning and the ending just because it would be right at the origin or right at the edge, but that's where it starts. And then the minor grid lines here are steps of point half, point half, point five, and the x axis is in steps of five. So automatically, wherever these breaks are set in the scale continuous function, that's where the grid lines will be placed in the theme. So in order to change the grid lines in the theme, you don't you don't change it in the theme. You change it by rescaling your axis, and then um, your theme will automatically adjust to that. So for example, here we've um, rescaled in the same way as here, but now we've also additionally added a theme call. And here we can do the same things we've done above, like change the color and um, the size. So now we've just done like blue and red, but you see that in order to move the grid lines, we had to first scale and then we could add the theme as normal. So it doesn't happen within the theme call. Great, so is there any questions on lines um, or on anything so far? Yeah, there's a question. Um, I think on the example that you just showed, um, are these numbers denoting pixels? These ones? I assume yeah. so. Okay, yeah. So these ones are the, they're not actually denoting pixels, they're denoting the unit size that you're working with here. So. Um, and what actual numbers you want to see. So I think like build depth in this data set was measured in millimeters, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so they're both measured in millimeters. So this is actually showing that the scale on the original unit size. So 14 millimeters, 16 millimeters, 18 or 20. So if we tried to do something that was like way above, like way out of the range, so say we wanted to go to like 36 here, then, oh, it actually zoomed in for me. I thought it would actually pop that all the way up to 36, but apparently it zoomed it in for me. Um, no, so basically it's on the scale of the data. Is that, does that make sense? Yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Anything and else? then there's, yeah, mm -hmm. there's another question that I can just quickly answer. There was a similar one before. Is it possible to use italics um, or, there was an earlier question, is it possible to use color for just one or, or two or a few words in the title or the subtitle? Um, and that is possible, but it's not uh, in base ggplot, like you need an additional, <clears throat> excuse me, you need an additional package for it. But we hope that we'll be able to cover that um, in the next uh, workshop on ggplot on November 10th. We should have time for that because it's an additional package. So it is possible, but you need an additional package. Yeah, it would be nice if ggplot was able to just do that. But yeah, <laughs> it's a slightly more, it's doable. It's just slightly more complicated. But it does look good. It, it does, does look, look very nice. Pretty good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you get it to work. <laughs> okay. Great, then I'll hand over to you, Julia. Yep. Okay. So let me know if that's big enough. Okay. 
All right, so Kyla talked us through element text and element line, and now all that's missing with these elements is element rect for rectangular. So with that, you can change the panel background or the plot background. So you can change the color and also the color of the line around it. Um, so here we have a first example where we're doing the panel um, background. And what it means by panel background is, is this area that your actual data is plotted. That's called the panel background. And I'll go back to the command. So you can see this is just as usual. So we're just adding theme and then panel background, and that's an element rectangular. And within element rect, you can say, what the fill is going to be and what the color is going to be. And this is exactly like in the aesthetics. Um, so in the in the aesthetics earlier, you also have to always remember fill is for larger areas. So fill yellow, that's for this entire background. And color is for smaller um, parts. So um, color is for lines or dots. So here for the line, um, we're using color equals orange. And you can see um, an orange line around this um, plot area. Again, we're going for bright colors to show you really quickly what has changed. We're not going for the most beautiful plot here, as you can probably guess. Um, and then the size argument is for how thick this line should be. So this orange line, um, how thick should that be? Right. So that's size equals four. And that's panel background. So again, panel background um, is just where your data is plotted, that rectangle. Um, but if we want to change the color of the space around this, so where we have all our labels and the legend and so on, we would have to say plot background. OK, so this is a bit more subtle. So plot background, same thing. So element rect for rectangular. Um, then fill is for kind of coloring in this larger area. And color is for drawing a line. Maybe I'll make that black, or maybe I'll, make, I'll actually make it yellow just so you can really see it. So it's for this line around the entire plot, or yeah, the entire graph. OK, and again, size is just how thick that line is. Right, so that's plot background. So this is everything where all your, yeah, all these text elements are. And often you would you would want these to be the same color, right? You would like the background to be the same color um, and this background also to be the same color. And if that's the case, you either have to use both of these options in theme. So both plot background and panel background and then set fill to the same color. So that's one option. Um, but the other option is to make one of them transparent. So here I'm making the panel background transparent. So you can see I've set element rect uh, and I've set the fill to transparent. You can also do fill equals NA. That works too. And then I'm actually just changing the color of the pl plot background. Okay, now you can see there's yeah, this is all the same color, both this panel background and the plot background is all this light gray color. Okay, so again, I've changed the color of one of these, or the fill, I should say, the fill of one of these, and the other one I've made transparent. And just to show you, you can also just set this to an A, so an A without quotation marks, and it looks just the same, right? So fill either equals NA or fill equals transparent. Same thing. Okay, um, and next I wanted to talk a little bit about the legend separately. And you'll see a lot of the things that we've already talked about um, come back up, up again for the legend. Um, so for the legend, what we can do is we can change the legend title um, and the legend text, and that's just element text. Right, so this is really hard to read, but I, I think you get the idea. So here we've set the legend title to this kind of greenish color and the legend text to gray. And we've also changed the sizes. Right, so like any other element text, you can change that in the legend. Um, often you want to, you might want to remove it. In this case, you 
you actually want to keep it, right? But if you wanted to remove it, you can just write legend position equals none and none in quotation marks. Okay, now it's gone. So that's one option there. Actually, I think ggplot has about five options to remove legends. Um, but if you want to do it within theme, you can just do legend position equals none. And if you want to only remove a specific element, you can, for example, remove the legend title um, by setting it to element blank. So element blank is always something that will delete the specific element. So now we only have, so it doesn't say penguin species anymore. It just says those three species and the title is gone. So with legend position, we, we use that to remove it, but we can also use it to move the legend around. So by default, you've seen that it's on the right. Um, we can also put it on the top, right? So now it's been moved up to here. We can move it to the bottom. So now it's here. And we can also move it to the left. And now it's on the left. Right, so you just type in the position in uh, quotation marks and that's it. And if we want to get really fancy with this, we can do it manually. So instead of using one of these kind of preset positions, um, we can use again, legend position and then give it a vector. So that's why we have the C. Um, and what that does is, so this is maybe a little bit um, confusing, but imagine that um, the X axis goes from zero to one and the Y axis goes from zero to one. And within that, you specify where should the legend be on the x-axis, and I've written 0.85, so pretty far to the right. And then the second number is how far up should it be on the y-axis, and I've written 0.15, so just a little, not, not very far up, right? And then it puts it to this position where we have it here. So I could, let's see what happens if I switch those numbers around, so just to maybe hopefully explain it a bit better. Okay, so now I've set X to 0.15, so up around here on the X axis, um, and Y to 0.85, so pretty high up. So this goes from zero to one. This has nothing to do with the range of your data. So the, the bill length from 40 to 60 or something, it has nothing to do with that. It just uses zero to one, just like the H just um, would as well where 0 0.5 is um, in the middle, right? So now it will be in the middle. And as you can see, it, it's a little bit annoying because we have this additional box around uh, the legend, which is filled in white and that actually covers some of the data. So that's not great, but we can again use element rect fill equals NA to get rid of that. Right, so now it has a transparent background. Um, and we could again do uh, transparent instead of NA, and it does the same thing. Okay, so now the, the legend doesn't cover up any plot points anymore. Okay, any questions? All right, and then we've come across the, the margin command earlier, but it really um, is really useful when you talk about the margin of the entire plot. So I think we used it for just adding some space around the, the text of the title. But what you can see is that ggplot often writes text or plots right up to the edge of your, yeah, of your graph or the edge of your um, box here. And that's often, often that doesn't look super nice and people actually want to add a little bit of space around their graph. And that's exactly what margin is for. So here you would, within theme again, you would use plot.margin equals margin. And then exactly as we've seen before, so how much space on the top, for T for top, right, bottom and left. Uh, so here I'm adding space at the bottom 
And I think the default is um, pixels. So pixel is, you know, is very small. Um, so for the plot, it made sense to only add a few pixels. But here, I actually want it to be in centimeters. I think you can also do inches. So let's see what that looks like. All right, and you can see I have a lot of space at the bottom now. So again, it's plot margin. And then we have to type in the settings for the margin. And change the unit if we want to. So that would be your space on the bottom. I can also, I often just do one centimeter all around and you can just see that it adds a little bit of space around the plot. And that often looks nice, I think. Okay, uh, right. And something else that you might want to do with your plot is use facet wrap. So facet wrap is, is a really nice little addition um, that lets you introduce an additional um, categorical variable, so an additional category. And then ggplot creates separate plots um, for this variable. So here I'm adding facet wrap and then I have to type in a little tilde, so this squiggly line, island. And what this has done is I'm still looking at bill length by bill depth for the penguin species because that was our original plot. But because I've added this facet wrap by island, it means that it does three separate plots for each of these islands that the penguins live on. So now it just shows everything separately for each of these islands. And you can see that some islands only have some species. That's why we have, um, for example, on this Targasan Island, we only have the Adelie species of penguins. So we have this additional element here of this box where the island name is in. So this gray box um, at the top. And we can also, uh, work with that in theme, and it's called the strip. So this box that contains the island names, that's called the strip. So here I'm adding again facet wrap, like I've just showed you, and then I'm adding a theme, and I can change the strip text, and that's just an element text, as you might have guessed. Um, here I'm just making it green, bold, um, a little bit bigger, and I'm moving it around, and then the strip background, so that will be the color, of this box, background color of this box. Um, I'll make that fill yellow. So I'll color that yellow and I'll make the line around it black. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so that, that's the strip text. And it's just an, a normal element text as you would, as you would expect. Um, and then the strip background, because this is a rectangular box, is element rect. And it works just the same as everything we've seen so far. Okay. All right. And to get just slightly more theoretical for just a second, <laughs> we, um, we've kind of seen a concept that's really important for theme, which is called inheritance. And we've, we've already kind of seen it. Um, but what it means is that um, these kind of subordinate elements will inherit from more general elements. So what that means is, let's say I'm going back to the axis title. And I would like to make those dark green and bold. Um, so if I do, yeah, so I can just type in axis title, but you know that we also have axis title dot X or dot Y. So if I execute this, we'll have dark green color for both of them. And the Y axis title will also be bold, um, but the X axis title will be green and in italics. Right, so this is what it looks like. Y axis is bold and green, X axis is uh, italics and green. So the reason why that works is because the X axis title inherits properties from axis title. So axis title is the um, more general command. Um, so axis title sets everything to dark green and bold. And that's why the X axis is also green, but then we can overwrite it and say, actually, green is fine. Let's leave the green. Um, but actually, we want it to be italics, in italics, not in bold. So that's what inheritance is. And maybe an additional example is that we can set, so something that's very useful um, is to set 
options for all text elements um, and that'll be especially useful when we uh, work with fonts because then you can set the same font for all text elements um, so we can say okay text is element text uh, again dark green and bold but then we want just the title uh, yeah, the title and the legend title, we want those to be different colors, but still they'll still be bold because they will inherit um, the bold property from element or from text. Okay, so it's very hard to read. You'll just have to believe me that it is in fact bold. So now we have all text is green and all text is bold, but we could overwrite anything that we wanted for the plot title or any other element later on. So that's a slightly more theoretical concept. I hope that makes sense. Okay. All right. And then last, and there was already a question about this in the chat, and it is very useful, um, is creating your own custom theme. So what this will do is this is something that you run before you create any plots. Um, and you can basically set a theme for the entire session. So for all the plots that you're going to run, you can set a theme. So they will all have the same look and the same same design. So let's do a theme. So the command for this is theme set. And then within theme set, we can use any of these inbuilt themes. So I'm just using theme minimal um, just to show you. So I'm running this. And then I'm running just P1. So that's where we saved our plots. I'm not, you can see, I'm not adding any theme here. I'm just running it. But because we've set theme to theme minimal, it now has theme minimal, even though I didn't add it specifically. And so that's how you can use theme set with these inbuilt themes. So you could replace that with anything you wanted. But the really interesting thing is that you can also make your own theme. So here I'm just calling that theme custom. So that's, you can choose that. That's just a variable name that you can pick. So I'm just picking theme custom. And then I'm running a theme command like we've seen before. So this is exactly as if you added it to a plot and I'll just make all text red. And because I like these arrows on the X and Y axis, um, I'm changing the X, yeah, X and Y axis to, to arrows. So that's my theme custom, I'll run that. And nothing happens because it this is just creating a variable. So you can see that it's up here, right? It's been added um, top right to my environment, but nothing happens at first. So we need to run theme set. And then in the brackets, we say theme custom. So instead of theme minimal, the example that we had, we just use theme custom. And then if we run the plot, you can see that it worked. So it set the custom theme. Um, and applied it to the plot I've run. Again, even though I haven't added any theme here. And then we can also um, quickly update um, this custom theme. So you could either just overwrite the variable, right? So you can add something to this variable and then run this again. But if you want to just quickly change one thing, you can just do theme custom and then arrow to assign it, theme update. And here I'm just adding panel background is going to be white. And you could add as many things as you would like here. So I'm just running this update. And then I'm running P1 again. You can see that now we have a white background. Okay, so this is super useful. Um, if, you, if you're creating graphs that all go into the same project, go into the same paper maybe, um, and you can just set a custom theme. Um, and what you can still do is um, add more theme options to a plot, right? You can always still overwrite things later, but it makes sense to have kind of a custom, um, yeah, a custom look for your plots that you can set with this um, theme set and then some kind of a custom theme. Okay, uh, questions? All right. So then we um, have a little bit of a challenge, kind of an exercise or a challenge um, for you. Uh, so Kyla made this plot earlier. So this is the penguin weights by sex now. And again, split up, split up by these three islands. Um, and well, the challenge is to recreate that plot. <laughs> 
So that's kind of an exercise for you if you like. If you want to, there's there's code that just makes um, the plot, so without the theme options, but that just makes the basic plot. You can look at that, or you can just um, try to write that yourself if you would like some um, additional ggplot practice. Um, and yeah, so if you if you'd like to, you can uh, take take us up on our challenge. Um, if you don't feel like it, and if you just need to kind of digest um, all this information, that's also fine. Uh, something that I wanted to, I did want to point out is when you start typing, um, our studio has this kind of autocomplete um, function, and that can be very helpful. So if I start writing, and I know, okay, I need something in the theme, and I need some kind of a text. Now, text is not a good example. I need something to do with like panel. Okay, here are all the panel options it is everything that starts with panels we have panel grid uh, panel um, background and so on um, or I need let's see something to do with axis something to do with an axis I can just start typing that and then it'll give me a lot of suggestions uh, so that's very useful you can just click on it and it'll fill it in for you so that's something I would recommend and the other thing is that you can just um, oops type in question mark theme so that'll just call up the help um the help for theme so that's over here and that has a long list of all the options that you have and you can also search in that so if i was like okay something to do with ticks you can type that in and you can see all these options so that's maybe a little help. <laughs> yeah, and same goes for looking for um, the elements, right? So if you know that it's a text element, but you forget what the options are to change the text element, then it's also really helpful. It's the same kind of thing. But if you look for element underscore text, for example, in the help files, then it will let you know what the what you can change in the text element. Yeah, it even so these elements even have their own help function. So these theme elements, yeah, and show you all these options. So at least you don't have to go to Google. <laughs> one, step, one step better. <laughs> okay, so then we'll stop the recording at this point. Um, and thank you for joining already. And it will stick around um, in case people would like to try our, our challenge.